Welcome everybody to another YouTube exclusive Voice of Nick episode. We're doing more Shadowrun Returns. And let's see what's going on back at the uh, Seamstresses Union. A lot of uh, commotion, it seems like. So we already talked to Cherry Bomb. That was our objective at the time. Now we want to find Johnny, but before we do that, we can say hi to everybody who's upstairs. Coyote. Coyote's face is pale and her voice is low, shaky. What the hell was that back there, woman? Just, what the frag was that? Um, the Universal Brotherhood is all about belonging to a hive or something. And Sam's sister is their leader. If I didn't see it, there's no way I'd believe it. Giant, unkillable bugs. She shudders, shakes it off. Fine, whatever. I want that woman dead now more than ever. If you go after her again, you think of me, okay? I'll be around, locked and loaded. Will do. Okay, later. Omae, oh you looking to hire the best for some common rabble? The best, of course. You got it. Look up the Nephilim network next time you're hiring. You won't be sorry. What's your story? It's a usual classic story for the ages. Hometown boy does good, joins an elite squad, then boom! Boom is a technical term for an explosion. Got blown up, hurt real bad, and now I have these shiny legs. I do it all again. Obviously, I try to miss the bomb. Now I'm here, running the best damn elite merc unit out there. But what's the story behind Nephilim Network? You need to know, Chummer, and you don't need to know. How'd you get involved in the Seamstresses Union? Oh, you know how it is. There was a girl and a gun and a back against the wall. You might say, me and this place, we were made for each other. And I ain't gonna tell you more than that, oh my eight. That's all I want to know. <laughs> I like John Bartlett. This game has some pretty sharply written, uh, you know, little moments in it. Mr. Johnson. The man sizes you up as you approach. His carefully groomed hair and the shine on his shoes seems out of place for the barons. Hey, you looking for work? I got a little something if you're up for it. It's a milk run. In my experience, it's never a milk run. He grins, exposing a set of unnaturally white teeth. Don't worry, this one's as straightforward as they come. The job's a simple extraction. The people I represent are interested in acquiring the talents of a scientist named Sada. Unfortunately, Mr. Sada is currently engaged with Renraku, which means he's engaged for life. It doesn't sit well with the people I represent. They see it as a subversion of the free market. And you want me to secure Mr. Sada's freedom to work for you instead? He flashes his pearly whites again. Exactly, but it has to be now. Renraku's shipping Sada out of Seattle in the morning for some sort of overseas research project. Tonight, he's being kept at a hidden research facility out here in the Barrens, just a couple miles from here. I hear they've been bringing in unmarked shipments for weeks now, thinking that nobody notices. We don't care about any of that. We just want Sada before he's out of our reach. The place should be lightly guarded, probably rent to cops, get in, grab Sada, and get out. In exchange, I'm authorized to remit 9,000 new yen in payment. He fixes you with a hard stare. I am not, however, authorized to negotiate. Mm, I'm in. See the new yen. We pay on delivery, friend. That's how it always works. I'll send the lab's location to your PDA. Hire a team and head there right away. Liberate Sada and deliver him to my employers. They'll have a car waiting outside the lab when you're done. Once Mr. Sada's on his way, meet me back here for payment. Alright, so I'm hoping that this doesn't negate... It can't negate the story quest. Yo, lady, have we met? You look familiar. I meet a lot of people, no problem. You need some brain benders tonight? I got some of that Merc stuff. Freakers, taxi drivers, you know. Can I, uh, trust you? Nobody's more trustworthy than they own Bobby. Kubota wouldn't let me in the place if I wasn't legit. All right, little Sammy. Battered, bruised, but not beaten. I heard you made double trouble with the Universal Brotherhood. Stirred up a hornet's nest, you might say. People are starting to say that there's some dark dreck going down in those chapter houses, like they're taking advantage of the poor folk who go in there looking for help. Gotta say, that makes my blood boil. 
It's bad enough that the government labels half the population as probationary citizens. We don't need more people preying on the most defenseless members of society. And I hate to bring race into it, but it's a fact that a good number of people who go to the Brotherhood for Help are metas like me. But what options do we have? Do you realize that it would take an act of Congress to grant me full citizenship? And they have yet to do it once. Wars are started more easily than a meta gets a sin in this country. So it's no wonder we turn to people like the Brotherhood, who claim to listen to our woes, who speak on our behalf. He catches himself, takes a breath, and visibly calms. Sorry, I, I just know some folks who went to the Brotherhood for these very reasons. I might have ended up there myself if Miss Kubota hadn't taken me in. Whatever's going on in there, I trust you'll put an end to it one way or another. Oh, you can count on that. Go get him, ma'am. Mr. Clue is cool. Alright, now... We're gonna hire the guys for this... current mission that we're doing. Let's also take whatever health packs and stuff we have. We probably want to buy some more. Yeah, we'll leave one in the thing just for emergencies. For once, Dr. Castle is not utterly absorbed in her work. In fact, she seems to have set aside whatever she's doing to give you her full attention. Perhaps word has spread about what you've already faced and what's still to come. I'm glad you're alright, little Sammy. I was afraid they would be carting you back to me in pieces. I don't suppose it would do me any good to suggest an early retirement? Or at the very least, that you might delay whatever's coming long enough to get you a decent night's sleep and a full meal. No one should die tired and hungry, is that it? You shouldn't have to die at all. It's something you still have control over. Ah, oh, but who am I kidding? I know your type all too well. Words of caution have little worth, and words of prohibition only make you more eager to throw yourself in the fire. You're like children that way. So fine, do what you will. Just tell me what I can do to keep you alive that much longer. So what have you heard, Doc? Well, let's review. In the past few days, I've lost one patient and nearly lost a second. I've also learned a man claiming to be a fellow doctor was responsible for the first of those deaths. And now I hear that another supposed force for good has been committing heinous acts on an innocent men and women. Quite frankly, it's almost enough to make a woman give up on the whole human race. But then I remember why I don't. I remember how many innocent lives Miss Kubota has saved by giving them place and purpose here at the Union. I remember seemingly useless wastes of flesh like Paco risking their lives saving the ones they love. I remember that some people are still willing to stand up against those who would seek to do harm to others. And that's the real reason you won't hear me argue against your chosen course of action. Because I agree that it must be done. I only hope it can be done without any more innocence coming to harm. That's a world I'd love to live in, but if I could make that deal, I would. And do the next best thing, put an end to this. I'd like to wake up to a world short one less evil. Oh crap, I don't have almost any money. Alright, we are going to have to take this from our stash then. How did I get so low on money? I wonder if I can sell this jazz. I'm never going to use it. How can I sell stuff? She'll buy this for 75. Oh, I'll sell her this. I don't want that. I can probably go back to the uh, guy upstairs, Benny or whatever his name was, Bobby, and sell the jazz to him because he's a jazz seller. Mammy. What's happening? Why can't I? Oh, there we go. No, it won't let me sell jazz just in general. I can sell cyber attacks though, but I wonder if it's based... I wonder if they are worth more if you sell them to the person who understands their value. I'm always wary of that mechanic being in a game. You know, some games will have it where like, if you go to an armor smith, they'll give you a worse price on weapons because they don't understand how weapons work. Alright, well... The moral of the story here is we got to put away the jazz because it's not going to be able to be sold. Also, I just realized that the jazz might not be sellable because it's not in our stash. Right. So let's get rid of it. I actually did this in the opposite order. This is going to cause us to be able to sell it. Right. 
right. Okay, good. Not that it's going to get us any money, really. Alright, who do we want to talk to here? Does this guy have any more uh, outfits? Hey, lady. I got some armored clothing here if you're interested. Oh, high grade street armor. No, I think this is all stuff we've had. Mine is First Nation armor. We want charisma, I think, is our thing. But we actually, I don't think we need charisma anymore because we have max charisma. Maybe quickness would be good then? Ganger mask is a pretty cool costume too. Strength and HP, intelligence, drone control. HP plus three. I like the rabbit costume. Pure body protection with a touch of class. See, that doesn't really have any description though. I don't know what it does for us. It has 10 armor. Oh, I guess it's just that it has 10 armor, which is actually really good. Let's try and buy that if we can get enough money. How, though, am I going to hire anybody? Oh, no, we, that's right, we can give them, we can pay them based on the result of the mission. All right, so we want to sell stuff to David Fry the second. Hey there, what's up? Yeah, we want to sell him some of our, these. Killer, Medic, we keep those. Medic level 1 will sell. Honestly, it's not worth selling. Yeah. So I'm not going to be able to get that new armor. Let's just see if he's got anything. Probably not, though. Oh, yeah. Wait, look at that. He's got some major firepower now. Enfield. A shotgun that has a burst fire option, 20 damage. Oh, yeah. Ares Alpha, top of the line assault rifle. 16 damage, long range, 38 capacity. We're currently using this, 12 damage. This costs a lot of money, though, and we don't even have the proper ranged combat skill. We could probably spend some of this. We should be building up that skill. Okay, we're currently at four ranged combat. So we need to get six, then this, then this. Yeah, and then we need to get to six range combat. All right, but every time we level this up a little bit, it ups our chance to hit with range, so that's certainly good. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on here. We're gonna have to talk to Johnny. We're gonna talk to Mr. Delilah. I wonder if we can talk to Johnny on the next run, though, after the mission. I don't want to, like, activate the final quest before we do this thing, because this is like a side, side hustle. But ladies and gents, we'll find out on the next one. Thank you, everybody, for joining. This is a YouTube exclusive here, so make sure you subscribe on this YouTube channel to see all the stuff uh, that comes out of it. These Shadowrun Returns episodes come out every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, four times a week. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.